Superstitions. I am not superstitious. Are you? Yesterday was Friday the thirteenth. Some people think that Friday the thirteenth is an unlucky day. I think that it is just like any other day. Some people believe that if a black cat crosses your path, you will have bad luck. I don't believe that either. My mother always gets upset if I open an umbrella in the house. She says that is bad luck. She is probably right about that one because an open umbrella would take up a lot of space and you might knock things over. If your left hand is itchy, you are supposed to get money. I have had an itchy left hand before, but I haven't received any money because of it. It is bad luck to walk under a ladder. That is probably true because you might knock somebody off the ladder or have a can of paint fall on top of you. If you are acting in a play, it is bad luck if someone says "good luck" to you. This is very confusing. You are supposed to tell an actor to break a leg. It doesn't mean that you want the actor to break his leg. It means good luck to the actor. Actors have a lot of superstitions that are very unusual. I am not superstitious. I don't believe in superstitions at all. It is just fun to learn about superstitions. Some of them are very old and have been passed down from generation to generation. I once did a project at school on superstitions. It was a very interesting topic, and I got a good mark for it. Help. Did you ever have to call for help? Were you ever in a situation that was an emergency? It is good to know what to do in case of an emergency. You should always know how to get in touch with the police and fire departments. I have read stories where very young boys or girls have called the police and saved their friends or family members' lives because they knew just who to get a hold of. If you see a fire, you should call the fire department. A lot of tragedies have been prevented because the calls have been made quickly. It is important that emergency vehicles arrive very quickly. That is why those vehicles have sirens. When their sirens go, it means to get out of the way. Policemen, firemen, and ambulance attendants are trained to handle very difficult situations. They often save people's lives. They go through a lot of training to become good at what they do. They never panic in emergencies. For your part, you should keep emergency numbers near the phone, or know what the emergency numbers are. Where I live, there is a special number that you call for any emergency. We teach that number to everyone, even very tiny children. It is important to remain calm if you need help. If you call an emergency number, you have to be able to speak clearly and tell the person you are talking to exactly what the problem is. I hope you are never in an emergency situation, but it is a good idea to be prepared. The Peach Orchard. When I was very young, I lived near a peach orchard. Now there is a park where the orchard used to be. I always remember the peach orchard because my grandmother and I used to go there and pick peaches. The owner of the orchard would let all the neighbors pick peaches. It's not the fact that I used to get many ripe, tasty peaches that I remember. It's the time that I used to spend with my grandmother that I remember. My grandmother was very old, but she was very healthy. She used to walk a lot. 
I think that is what kept her fit. She had a lot of energy, so she liked to go to a lot of places. She would get a fruit basket, and then she would ask me if I wanted to go to the orchard. I always said yes because I enjoyed walking through the orchard on a sunny day. We never climbed up on a ladder to reach the peaches. We just reached for the low hanging fruit. My grandmother and I used to talk all the time that we were out there. It was nice to spend time with her. She told me many stories about when she was a young girl. We laughed and got to know each other better. My grandmother only visited us during the summer. She lived in California and I lived in Niagara Falls, so we didn't get to spend a lot of time with each other. We enjoyed the hot summer days in the orchard. You could smell the peaches and the bees buzzed lazily by us. My grandmother would point out different insects and birds to me. I learned a lot about nature from her. We would end up with a big basket of peaches. When we got home, my mother would wash the peaches and often she would bake a peach pie for us. Nobody bakes a peach pie like my mother. It's good to have memories like that. Childhood memories of time spent with my grandmother are very precious to me. Sometimes it's just the simple things that you do in life that leave you with the nicest memories. Learning to dance. I went to England with my mother. She used to be a singer in a band. We went to the hotel that she used to sing at. It was a big, fancy hotel. Some of the people that she knew when she sang in the band were still there. They remembered my mother and they had a good time talking to her and remembering old times. Many people told me that I looked like my mother. In the hotel, they had a fancy hall where they had ballroom dancing. I am not used to that kind of dancing. I always dance to rock music. A man told me that he would teach me how to dance. It looked very easy. I held one of his hands and put my other hand on his shoulder. He told me exactly how to move my feet. I was very clumsy and I stepped on his toes. He was patient with me and he counted one, two, three. I tried to waltz with him. I would start out pretty well, but then I would get mixed up and stand on his toes again. The man laughed about it. I told him that I wasn't a very good dancer, but he said that I was good for a beginner. I think he was just being polite. The man asked my mother to dance. My mother is a very good dancer. I didn't know that about her. She never stepped on the man's toes once. The man thanked us for dancing with him, and I thanked him for giving me dancing lessons. I don't think I'll ever be very good at that type of dancing. Each generation has a specific type of dancing. The way that I dance is different from the way that my mother dances. The way that I dance doesn't involve moving your feet too much. I'm not too good at fancy steps. Superheroes. When my brother was very young, he loved superheroes. He collected plastic figures of all the superheroes. I think he had every superhero figurine that there was. He used to tie a towel over his shoulders and run through the backyard. He pretended that he was rescuing people. One time he stood on the roof. He really thought that he could fly with his superhero cape on. He would have hurt himself if he had jumped. 
My dad saw him and told him to get down. My dad explained to my brother that superheroes are not real. Real people cannot fly from rooftops. My brother was disappointed. He thought that the superheroes really existed. My dad explained that most superheroes were created as comic book characters. Somebody used their imagination to make them up, and then an artist drew them. My brother was not impressed. He said that he wanted to meet the superheroes. My father told him that he might meet someone dressed up as a superhero, but it wouldn't really be a superhero in the costume. It is hard to explain to small children that the things that they see in comic books and on television aren't really real. My brother still pretends that he is a superhero. He doesn't jump from rooftops, but he runs around and makes noises like he is flying. I look at him and remember when I used to do things like that. I'm more mature than my brother. I know that superheroes aren't real, but I know that he is having fun and using his imagination. Being a princess. Sometimes I think that I would like to be a princess. A princess would live in a palace, and wear beautiful clothes. She would have servants to do chores for her, and she would probably marry a handsome prince. People would recognize her. They would wave to her as she drove by. It seems like it would be a lot of fun to be a princess, but maybe it wouldn't be so nice. Maybe it would be terrible to be recognized by everyone. Maybe a princess would feel like everyone was watching her. She would have to look nice every time she left the palace. There would always be people with cameras who wanted to take her picture. A princess would have no privacy. Even in her own palace, there would be servants around, so she would never really be alone. If I were a princess. I would worry about security for my family. Sometimes, people who are in high positions are threatened by other people. That would be a worry. I'm not so sure that being a princess would be all that much fun. I think it might be better to be just a normal person like me. I don't have to worry about looking wonderful all the time. People don't follow me around and take my picture. Whenever you see a picture of a princess, she is smiling. I wonder if she's smiling on the inside, or just smiling for the camera. My worst fear: I am afraid of water. I don't know why I am afraid. I have never had a bad experience in the water. I just never learned to swim. I should have done that when I was just little. It would be easier for me to swim now. If I had started when I was young, I will go into the shallow water, but I start to panic when the water gets higher than my chest. I don't like the feeling of not being able to put my feet on the bottom of the pool or the lake. I don't like to get water up my nose. I choke and cough when that happens. My friends just tell me to relax and I will float, but I find it hard to relax in deep water. They keep telling me that if I panic, I will sink. Most of my friends have had swimming lessons. Some of them are even lifeguards. They have tried to teach me to swim, but I think I need to go to a place where they actually teach swimming. It would be nice to jump into a pool of cold water on a hot summer day. That would be so refreshing. If I go out onto a boat, I always wear a life jacket. I think it is wise to do that. Everyone should wear a life jacket on a boat. I would rather be safe than sorry. I have decided that I will overcome my fear. I will go and take swimming lessons. I have a goal. By this time next year, I would like to be able to swim the length of the pool without being afraid. It is best to face your fears and deal with them. I hope that I can overcome my fear of water. If I live to be one hundred. I think I would like to live to be one hundred. It seems like an awfully long time to live. 
it is an entire century. Imagine all the changes that you would see if you lived to be 100. I had a neighbor who was 85. She used to tell me what things were like when she was a little girl. She told me what my town used to look like, what her clothes were like, and what her school was like. I used to enjoy listening to her stories. Everything was so different when she was young. Listening to her was like having history come to life. I used to try to imagine what life was like for her back then. If I was a hundred, and I had grandchildren and great-grandchildren, I would tell them stories about my childhood. I would hope that I had a good memory so that I could remember everything. If I do want to live to 100, I'll have to have a healthy lifestyle. Not too many people live to be that old. If I do get to be that old, I hope I'll still be mentally alert and physically agile. In my country, the Prime Minister sends a letter of congratulations to anyone who has their 100th birthday. People who live to be 100 are very special. Maybe in the future, with better medical care and healthier lifestyles, more people will live to be 100. If I live to be 100, I'll have a birthday cake. But I won't put 100 candles on the cake. I could never blow out 100 candles. What I like most and least about myself. I was trying to think up the best and the worst things about myself. I think the best thing about me is that I am very friendly. I have a lot of friends and they all like me. I try to be good to my friends. I don't often have arguments with people. I think that I am quite easy to get along with. The worst thing about me is that I sometimes feel sad. Sometimes I don't feel sad for any particular reason. I just get into moods where I am depressed. Sometimes there is a reason to be sad. I was sad when my pet frog died. I was sad when I lost my favorite baseball card. On those days, I'm still nice to my friends, but inside I feel like there is a heavy weight in my chest. I think that everyone feels sadness sometimes. I try to do things that make me happy whenever I get into one of my sad moods. Last Saturday, I felt a bit sad, so I called up my friend John and asked him if he wanted to go to the movies. We went to a comedy. We laughed all the way through the movie so that by the time the movie was over, I didn't feel sad anymore. My friendliness is my best trait, and my sad moods are my worst traits. I have to work at getting over my sad moods more quickly. Being sad doesn't do anyone any good. There is no use in feeling sorry for oneself. The Trunk in the Attic Last month, my grandmother asked me if I could help her to clean out her attic. I was happy that she asked me. My grandmother says that her attic is full of junk. I think that her attic is full of treasures. I helped her to dust and vacuum the attic. I pulled and pushed around boxes and crates. I helped her to wash the floors and walls. My favorite thing that I did was to sort through the old trunk that she had up there. The trunk had a rusty latch on it. It was a bit difficult to open. But my grandmother got a knife and pried the latch open. The trunk was full of all kinds of things. There were lots of clothes. Some of the clothes had been my grandmother's. There was a blue velvet dress that she had worn to a dance when she and my grandfather were dating. It was a beautiful dress, but there were a few moth holes in it. There were some of my mother's old clothes. There was a pair of bell-bottom slacks that had bright flowers on it. I couldn't believe that my mother had ever worn something like that. There were some of my mother's old report cards. Some of her marks weren't very good. I had fun reading the report cards. There were photographs. There was a picture of my grandparents holding my mother when she was a baby. There was an old baseball glove that one of my uncles had owned. There was even one of my old dolls in there. One of her legs was missing. My grandmother said that I was rough on my dolls when I was little. I should have taken better care of my toys. There was even some old jewelry. I tried on some of the old clothes and jewelry. I told my grandmother that I liked looking through old things. My grandmother told me to keep whatever I wanted. 
she said that it was all junk. I still say that her trunk was full of treasures. And cold. I notice that whenever it is summer, people complain about the heat. But whenever it is winter, people complain about the cold. It seems that people are never satisfied. I don't like the winter. It is usually much too cold for me. My teeth chatter, and my fingers turn numb whenever the weather gets cold. It is hard for me to warm up once I start to freeze. I try to wear layers of clothes, but winter winds go through my clothes no matter how much I wear. My feet feel like they are blocks of ice on a cold January day when I walk home from school. I would not like to live in a place that had cold climate all year long. I am not comfortable when it is too cold. I like the summer. Some people say that it is hot and sticky in the summer, but I don't mind the heat at all. I love to feel the warm sunshine on my skin. I like the freedom of not having to wear heavy coats and boots. I am the happiest when there is a slightly cool breeze that comes along to refresh you on a hot summer day. I could live in a place with a hot climate. I would enjoy that. Of course, when you are in a place with a hot climate, there are more bugs than in places with cooler climates. I don't care for bugs. Where I live, it is very humid. The heat and moisture combine to make it uncomfortable sometimes. It is nicer when the heat is high, but the humidity is low. It would be better if I lived somewhere where it was hot, but not humid. That would be just perfect. Walk a mile in my shoes. Have you ever heard the saying, walk a mile in my shoes? I think it's a very good saying. Do you know what it means? It means that before you judge someone, you should put yourself in his or her position. For example, if someone was running in a race and they did very poorly and came in last, it wouldn't be fair to say, oh, he's just a terrible runner. You would have to look at all the circumstances that made the person lose the race. Maybe they pulled a muscle in their leg the day before. Maybe this is their very first race. Maybe they are not in good form because something isn't right in their lives. There can be so many things that affect a person's life, performance, and moods. There can be so many things that affect a person's life, performance, and moods. If someone was very quiet at a party, you couldn't just assume that they weren't friendly. You don't know what is happening in their lives. They could be feeling ill, or they might have just had a bad experience. Nobody can know exactly how another person feels. Even if someone tells you what he or she is experiencing, you still won't fully understand what is going on inside the other person. Everyone perceives and feels things differently. To walk a mile in someone else's shoes is to try and understand things from that person's perspective. We are all shaped by the events that have taken place in our lives. No two people have gone through the exact same things. So, before you are quick to judge someone, stop and think about what it is that they might have gone through. You won't always understand why people do what they do, but you can try to understand and put yourself in their position. If I could go back in my life, if I could go back in my life and do some things differently, this is what I would do. I would not waste so many hours in front of the television set. I would get out and enjoy my life rather than watching actors in shows. I would be a little more considerate of other people. I would realize that my mother has more to do than pick up after me. I would pay more attention in school. Tests are easier when you have paid attention rather than fooling around in class. I would save more money rather than spend it on useless things. I would read more. Reading is enjoyable and it opens the doors into all kinds of wonderful places, both real and imagined. I would learn to play an instrument. Music is always appreciated if it is played well. I would eat better foods. I would try to stay healthy through my diet and exercise. I would take more pictures and I would keep a journal. 
memories are very precious. I would take the time to listen to what people have to say. People appreciate a good listener. I would take the time to enjoy each day as it comes. Sometimes I am so busy looking forward to what is coming up that I don't take the time to enjoy the day that I am living in. That's what I would do if I could go back in my life. In fact, I think I'll just make a habit of doing all of those things all through my life. Joking. Joking is good. Jokes can be very funny. Jokes can also be hurtful. Jokes can be tasteless, too. It is not an easy thing to find jokes that do not offend anyone. Some jokes make fun of different races. Those jokes are not funny. They are hurtful. It is not right to tell racist jokes. Many jokes use bad language or are about questionable subject matter. These jokes are also not acceptable. Many people are highly offended by rude jokes. What some people find funny, others will not. Comedy is a very personal thing. Some people like slapstick comedy. That is the kind of comedy that the Three Stooges use. Some people like very subtle humor. Some people will laugh at just about anything. Sometimes it is not appropriate to laugh, but you feel like laughing anyway. Did you ever see anyone fall down? Did you feel like laughing when they fell down? You were probably worried that they had hurt themselves, yet the way that they fell was so funny that you felt like laughing. It's not funny when someone falls, but you can't help but laugh even though you try to hide it. Jokes and comedy differ from culture to culture. Many people from other countries come here and don't understand our comedy. Jokes and comedies are often geared toward our environment. Sometimes comedians make fun of the things that we do in our day-to-day -day lives, like going to the bank or going grocery shopping. We can all relate to that. Being a comedian is not an easy job. Telling jokes and making people laugh is extremely difficult. Jokes are fun, and they are funny if they are good. Jokes can get you into a lot of trouble if they are inappropriate, and sometimes they're just not funny and nobody laughs. Here's a joke. Why does the cow wear a bell? Because its horns don't work. Do you get it? Do you think it is funny? Well, maybe it's not that funny. I told you that it was difficult being a comedian. Drugs. There are two different types of drugs. There are legal drugs and there are illegal drugs. Legal drugs are the type of drugs that the doctor gives you when you are sick. Illegal drugs are the drugs that people sell on the street. Illegal drugs are very dangerous. If someone ever wants you to try any type of substance that you are not sure about, you should always say no. People who sell drugs on the street are criminals. If they get caught, they will be sent to jail. They sell drugs to get money. They don't care that people's lives are ruined from taking drugs. If you take illegal drugs, you can become addicted to them. That means that you just have to have the drug no matter what. Some people steal from other people to get money to buy drugs. Drugs affect your mind. If you take drugs, you will not be able to think clearly. Your marks in school will drop. Your memory won't be very good. Your personality won't be the same. It is very unfortunate that some people do try drugs. They think that it won't hurt them. They are wrong. If you are smart, you will stay away from all drugs, except for the ones that the doctor gives you. Drugs are just bad news. If you know someone who is thinking about trying drugs, tell them that their entire life could be ruined. In America, they have a saying, just say no to drugs. It is a good saying, but I think I would rather say, I'm just too smart to take drugs.